I love hypotheticals. It's just interesting to take a step back and think about how things could have gone differently. Like what little changes may have led to. What if Sonic started as a point and click adventure game and Mario was an arcade beat em up? Well, in a sense, I guess it kind of was, because the OG Mario games made Kid Me want to give someone a classic beat em up to the sternum. My point being, small little details can have major impacts, and that's fun to think about. With that, I wanted to brainstorm some ideas on how a game as mechanically distinct as Splatoon could work in different genres. So today, we're going to be doing exactly that. We're going to pick a video game genre and then try and figure out how to incorporate Splatoon's base mechanics to some degree. Essentially, we're building our own Splatoon spin-off before Nintendo, and I hope that sends ages like milk because, for the love of god, I'd love a Splatoon spin-off. Or cartoons. Honestly, I'd take either. Regardless, I think we should establish some ground rules as to try and keep this at least semi-coherent. I know none of my videos are that, but let's just pretend they are for a moment. To keep this from getting too out of hand, we'll just be establishing gameplay mechanics more or less. AKA, how would we make a different genre still feel like Splatoon to some degree? So no plot, characters, or anything like that, but I might touch upon art style a bit. However, let's just assume we have a distinct enough art style that fits Splatoon's radical and funky nature. That being said, if you like this video, make sure to do the YouTube thing and like, comment, and subscribe. This one took a bit of extra work due to all the new visuals and assets, and I might do a follow-up going more in-depth into story, characters, and so on, but only if this does well. But for now, let's start with the basics. This is probably the most likely genre we get a Splatoon spinoff in, as Nintendo has shown a preference in RPGs for some of their spinoffs, say Paper Mario, Mario & Luigi, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, so on and so forth. Also, I am aware that Pokemon itself is an RPG, but Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is just as much of an RPG as it is a roguelike, and is a happy reminder that most games aren't stuck to one genre, but instead blend together quite a few. We're not restricted to one. That said, I'm not the biggest RPG guy. I've played a few, but I've only finished like one non-Pokemon RPG, so it's not my expertise, but still a genre I respect a ton for its ability to share in-depth stories and unique gameplay mechanics, if done correctly. A bad RPG is as boring as a game gets, meaning we have our work cut out for us to adapt something as unique as Splatoon and not mess it up. For gameplay, we want it to be something new and interesting. Reminder, I am not a game designer, so uh, feel free to suggest changes below. Gameplay would be divided into two distinct sections, the collect phase and the battle phase. The collect phase would be this gameplay loop's most out there mechanic, and one I might need to adjust later on. My idea is when you start a battle, you're thrown into a small arena. Think about the size of an average Smash Bros stage. Or move and die, actually that's a much better comparison. Both the player and whoever they're fighting will spawn in the stage and be forced to run around to try and collect ink from ink puddles, cans of ink, or ink tanks. All of which have varying amounts of ink and varying spawn rates, with ink tanks being the rarest. Alongside that, other small trinkets can potentially spawn and be collected for extra bonuses and attacks which I would dive a bit more into in a few. The arena itself would have a randomly generated layout and random drops. Drops can be influenced based on equipment, which may have stats to increase spawn rates for certain items, or your enemies, who can also have equipment that increases or decreases spawn rates. Remember, you and your adversary are competing for these items before the actual battle begins, so it's a battle of speed and generally knowing what to prioritize. The phase itself wouldn't last very long, however you can get upgrades to increase this time if needed, but by default it'd be about 10 to 20 seconds. However, if this seems too little or too much, it can always be adjusted. Remember, this is all theory crafting. Though, for bosses, this time may be increased by default alongside the size of the stage, ink on the stage, and items that spawn. The collect phase items range from smaller items like heals or tiny buffs to bigger items like temporary armor in the form of the cased armor you'd see in a Splatoon story mode, or even temporary weapon upgrades. I say temporary as these upgrades would deplete after a set amount of turns, or after the battle is over. And with only a few items spawning per collect phase, and all the items having different rarities, there is a bit of RNG involved. That could potentially make an easy fight harder if the enemy ends up with a powerful item instead of you, but with that in mind, there will always be enough ink for both of you, but getting more ink than your enemy is definitely helpful, as it directly affects your ability to battle. Which segues us into... Okay, time for the fun stuff. The battle phase is more or less what you'd expect for an RPG experience. However, I wanted to once again give it a more unique flair that made it more Splatoon-esque in spirit. The collect mechanic gave us essentially the setup and positioning phase of a Splatoon match. But what about the fighting? Splatoon is all about reaction and positioning, so how do we turn that into an RPG mechanic? Well, we don't need to directly represent those aspects of Splatoon, at least not to that degree, that'd be a little excessive, but even then, it's a fun thing to keep in mind while we brainstorm our ideas. I why did I turn Southern there for a second? Our brainstorm our ideas. It is a fun thing to keep in mind while we brainstorm our ideas. And all of that made me think of how I want this gameplay to be reactionary in some way. Though I couldn't think of anything that wasn't just the Mario & Luigi gameplay loop. For those who don't know, the Mario & Luigi series of RPGs has most of its moves and attacks made in a way where the player's reaction directly affects the effectiveness of an attack. Alongside this, they also give you complete control over your ability to dodge attacks. It is in the player's hands whether or not your attacks are strong or weak, and if you get hit or not. It's not like most RPGs where a lot of that is just left up to RNG. And I love that! These mechanics would be perfect for a Splatoon RPG! 
And it's not unrealistic for Nintendo to rehash mechanics for a new game or reuse a formula, but it doesn't make for an interesting answer, does it? Yeah, not particularly. So here's my thoughts. First off is the ink mechanic. Ink collected in the first phase will be added to a counter displayed somewhere on screen, I'm sure. And every action that involves ink will use up a set amount of ink depending on certain stats, with each weapon having damage, accuracy, crit rate, and difficulty. Damage and crit rate are as generic RPG as it gets for stats. One is the weapon's base damage, and the other is basically just critical hit chance. And the weapons with higher damage tend to use more ink, though they also tend to have lower accuracy and higher difficulty for the sake of balance. And when I say accuracy, most people probably think of Pokemon and how it works there, with each attack having different accuracy and the lower it is, the more often it'll miss, but it means something a little bit different here. This plays into how attacks actually function. You see, when you attack, you'll be greeted with a small mini game, similar to Undertale, but with a bit more going on. Actually, you know, I wrote that into the script, but it's more like you get a mini uh, rhythm game as you have to play a quick Guitar Hero-esque mini game before attacking. The notes you hit can give you potential buffs to your stats. Basically, you'd be able to increase the damage and crit rate of your attack. However, the enemies can also do this, but for convenience, you wouldn't have to watch them do the minigame portion as well. The game would just show some sort of indicator. You'd have to repeat this for each attack, or you can choose to do a flat attack, which will just do the base attack with no minigame. As to how accuracy plays into this, depending on what your accuracy is will determine how big your notes are, the smaller the notes obviously being harder to hit. Then there's difficulty. This would affect how fast the notes move, with lower difficulties having fewer and slower notes, and higher difficulties having more notes, but also faster notes. Meaning there's more potential for buffs, but only for those who are fast enough. And if you fail the minigame altogether, you fail your attack. This way, it's not always the best option over a flat attack, and has some sort of risk versus reward mechanic involved. If you run out of ink mid-match, you have two options. You can trigger another collect phase mid-match, with the caveat that your foes will get a free hit in, or you choose to attack with your fists, which will be a low damaging attack with no potential for buffs. Beyond basic attacks are subs and specials. Since this is a solo adventure, I think it'd be fair for the player to be able to swap around different subs and specials as multiplayer balance isn't a concern. Not like it's much of a concern for the actual game. Half the time you walk out of spawn and you just get sniped. I guess that's my fault for always running low range weapons. Also peeking corners I shouldn't peek, but that's beside the point. Subs will take up the most ink, but in turn will grant some sort of status upon successfully hitting the enemy. For instance, maybe a burst bomb makes the enemy slower, so if you trigger a collect phase mid-match, you'll have the advantage, and stuff like that. Specials I don't have a great idea for at the moment. We could make them use the rhythm game buff mechanic, and obviously they would use a crap ton of ink, but maybe taking some cues from Mario and Luigi isn't the worst idea. Making specials function a lot like they do in that game, with them all having their own unique minigame to get the most out of them. I feel like that would be really cool, but obviously if you guys have any better ideas, feel free to tell me. Okay, that was pretty long-winded, and hopefully it all made sense. I feel like this could make for an extremely interesting RPG experience. But the more I write, and the more I think about it, I can't help but feel like it might be a bit much. The collect phase mixed for the attack phase I feel like would make for an intriguing gameplay loop, but it needs to be carefully balanced to make it successful. Otherwise, it'll just be tedious and frustrating. It's a pitfall any game could fall into, and therefore, while I think these ideas could work, I think some heavy tweaking would need to happen in order to balance everything out into an overall fun and fair experience. Oh yeah, there's more to an RPG than just attacking. For the other mechanics, I think it's safe to play them pretty straightforward. Items would work exactly like you'd expect, no trickery there. Running from a fight would be about the same, and if you want to run from a fight, you would be able to do so from the collect phase. You wouldn't be forced to do it if you plan to run anyways. That'd just be mean. The only other mechanic I can think that we're missing is some sort of defense or blocking mechanic. For that, I have two ideas. Either a mechanic where you choose a block option to replace your turn, and then an Undertale-like bar appears, and depending on where you hit, you block a certain amount of damage. Or it just blocks an attack outright, but obviously you can't attack that turn either. One is more skill-based, the other is simpler. And with all the other mechanics in play, the simpler option might be the better option. I'll leave that up for others to decide though, as I'm not sure. When the fight concludes, there will be a chance of getting an item associated with the enemy you defeated. Say you beat a Salmonid, then you might get some power eggs or something similar. Then these items could be exchanged for money or used in battle. Money would obviously allow you to buy other items, new weapons, and even clothes from varying shopkeepers. We can't have a Splatoon game without fashion, and this is no different. I do think clothes shouldn't impact your stats though. This way you can wear whatever you want, and instead you'd use tickets to purchase drinks that would perma-increase your stats by a certain degree. Alongside of course the gradual stat increases you get from leveling up. I think that's a good place to stop for now. We established a lot of base battling mechanics, and I feel like we should refine these ideas before moving on to new ones. I was originally going to do several spin-off ideas in one video, but I kinda got carried away, so we'll have to save that for another time. That said, I still have a lot I want to say about this. Like different item types, how certain weapons work, characters, plot lines, the whole nine yards. Is that something people say? I don't know. I think this could become a really fun community project, and if enough people want to see it, it's another video type I could see being a fun series to work on. However, as of now, I just hope you all enjoyed me yapping about Splatoon stuff again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!
Lord, turn that fan on!